What's up America? This is Kim and you're with Geauga Farms Academy. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to do a video about you have your CCW, now what? We get this question a lot. This is for you new people who out there and you want to kind of know first steps. And we're going to assume that of course you already went through the process because each state is different and also that you understand your laws in your area. So let's get started. The first thing you want to figure out is how you're going to carry. And, and that's, that's going to be dependent upon your body positions. So we talk about appendix is probably uh, between appendix and 430 the two most common. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people like appendix. I don't happen to be one of them. It doesn't mean it's a bad position. It's just not for me. Okay. If that's something that uh, works for you and you carry every day that way and you train that way, you can certainly do it comfortably and safely. Uh, but training, of course, is the key. So you guys got to realize that this video could probably be three days long and I still have stuff to talk about. When it comes to carrying, and it's a whole lifestyle and there's a lot that goes along with it. It's, it's software, things up here, your training and knowledge and abilities, capabilities, limitations, and it's also the hardware, the gear that you wear, the, the belts and the holsters and all that kind of jazz and, and how you're going to carry. So. We have a lot of uh, videos already out there. About different holsters, and uh -huh. we'll put links below to those videos. Absolutely. So you can watch them if you want to know more about how the holsters work. And as we go along, if there's something we say in particular, and then there's a video that we made about it, I'll try to reference that as well. Um, but this is generally, again, trying to give you an overview. So what's the next thing we're going to talk about? About hardware. I'm getting attacked by bugs here. <laughs> um, so that's all. obviously the holster is one of them, the gun is one of them, and the belt is one of them. And uh, you want to talk about belts? Belts. A lot of people um, make the mistake they just use a normal belt. And I used to do that too. And I didn't understand how much of a difference it makes having a good heavy duty gun belt. Because first of all, you're going to wear through your belts really quickly. And second of all, it doesn't hold it in place, especially if you're actually practicing dry fire at home and you try drawing. That thing's going to be moving around like crazy. It makes it much more comfortable and just just carrying is so much easier when you have an actual And how many belt. people would you say we come in contact with initially have the thought of not wearing a belt? Uh, like, I'm just going to do this, but I don't really want to wear a belt. Like, a lot. A lot. <laughs> a lot. Especially women. They're just like, they don't want to wear a belt. And How does it typically work out? Doesn't work out doesn't so work well. Out. They try out different things, and then they end up coming and seeing how much more comfortable and easier it is to carry that way. Which is part of, the, of this lifestyle that I'm, I'm talking about. You, you, have to have, you have to be willing to compromise. I'm not saying that you have to completely throw out all your clothes and start all over and dress like a, a hobo or something, but at the end of the day, you, you have to have some compromise there. Like Kim may like something better than another clothing apparel, but she's going to have to pick one based on the fact that she's carrying a gun. Is that a fair That's statement? That's true. So what are the two most common types of holsters? Inside the waistband or outside of the waistband? Let me rephrase that. What are the two most common that you would actually carry a gun in or should carry a gun in? <laughs> Inside the waistband or outside the waistband? It's just real simple. OWV, IWV, that's what that means. Um, I'm not going to get too in-depth on holsters. Again, there's plenty of, of, of videos mm -hmm. that we've done already and there's plenty of Google searches out there for whatever you like and that's your own flavor and style. Uh, we are going to talk about off-body carry and all the alternative uh, forms of carry because that's always come up like pocket mm -hmm. carry. Um, Look, I'm not going to get in down that rabbit hole. Off-body carry is ridiculously stupid. Uh, you have, we have, uh, well, I think one of our top five videos we ever did was on off-body carry, and you can watch Kim uh, try to get her gun out of her purse because everyone thinks that's a, a great idea. When she knows the threat is coming and she has seven yards to be ready, uh, which is completely ridiculous in real life, right? That's right. So uh, pocket carry, I don't, I don't get it. The, the holsters that are available, don't really protect the trigger guard that well. Plus, I got to reach into my pocket, and I just—it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, for me, for my level of dedication and Kim as well, if we're going to carry a gun, it's going to be in a good gun belt and a good holster on our bodies. Period. End of story. That's the deal. Okay. Uh, alternatives. We're probably not your people for that. There's other videos from other people. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? That's fair. All right. Next, you're going to want to talk about selecting a gun. Oh Lord. Everyone's got, you have to carry this gun, or this brand, or this or that, right? So here's, here's my two cents on that. There's lots of great manufacturers out there, but this, is an, this cannot be disputed. Glock, Smith & Wesson, uh, and SIG are the three most popular gun manufacturers in the world as far as production pieces out there. So when it comes to holsters, equipment, and gear, if it's available for a Glock, Smith & Wesson, or SIG, I'm saying it will be available for one of those guns. Uh, does that mean that CZs or HKs or et cetera, et cetera, are all shitty guns? No, I'm not saying that at all. 
There's a lot of manufacturers that make great guns, mm -hmm. but finding exactly what you want may be a challenge, okay? So I'm just saying from that point of view, that's, that's where I would go. They all make a gun in any size from full-size competition to a little tiny single stack uh, gun, okay? You gotta find what works, works best for you. Uh, that said, go ahead. I was gonna say, also you wanna think about the size of the gun. I know everyone wants to go for the small one because it's really, really easy to conceal. Yeah but it's gonna turn into a cannon in your hand and you're not gonna be very accurate and shoot very well. So you gotta have a balance. You want it to be large enough to where you can control it, shoot it well, and yet, you know, small enough where you can conceal it. Yeah, and if you took a CCW class, which I'm assuming you did, or maybe you don't need one in your state, but you took something, I hope, uh, there's probably, the instructor may have shown you different little guns and, and so forth and, and small concealment. But that, you gotta understand, the training wheels, right, of guns, right, like the way you wanna learn, is from the largest physical size gun that has the biggest grip area, the biggest mass, all that. So you can learn the fundamentals of shooting. The, really, if you want to talk about advanced, that's when you get into the small guns, not the other way around. So the other one is calibers, which thank God that debate has finally pretty much died. There's very little argument about that anymore. Nine is the king of all. It's undisputable. The, the, the amount of, of ammo that is sold is not disputable. Uh, ballistically, not disputable. So. 380, in my opinion, uh, it's the, the ballistics aren't as great as a 9 millimeter. You're not gaining any capacity. Uh, you're paying more for the round. You're really gaining nothing but even a smaller gun, and I think that's definitely a disadvantage when you're trying to control a gun like that. Uh, 40, I'm not even going to discuss. That's ridiculous. 45, I mean, you're just talking about such a large diameter round and, and how how fewer in capacity you're carrying. It just doesn't make any real logical sense. You're not really gaining anything from it. But shoot what you like. That's just uh, my take on that. So I just want to add this one too, as far as apparel and things. We talked about dressing for the gun. So the summertime, uh, typically a t-shirt like this is a large on me, and so it's it's pretty form-fitting. It'd be a little challenging to hide a gun. I mean, you'd see the outline and whatever. I don't really care about that, but this wouldn't be ideal. I would carry at least an extra large uh, t-shirt if I were going to do that. But one of my favorite um, items uh, is if I, w I wouldn't be wearing a t-shirt underneath this, especially when it's hot, is... Uh, just a sleeveless, sleeveless, a short sleeve, a shirt like this one, a button down. They're very light, uh, so they're they're just as comfortable as far as temperature goes as a t-shirt, uh, but it's very loose and flowing, so I can I can carry my knife on me, I can carry my gun on me. Uh, there would be no way at this time. I have a, a M&P compact with a flashlight on it, and in this in this rig, there would be no way for you to be able to see this once I have my shirt buttoned up. Uh, I walk around, but yet I can still access everything I need to when I need to get to it. So uh, these are a really good alternative for for the males in the group. And all you ladies, if you're interested in how I carry, uh, if you follow me on Instagram and Facebook and things like that, I always post like my different outfits and like ways that I carry and still look like a lady. That's right. Um, and you can also watch some of my Kim's Corners. I do different reviews of some options for women um no need for the rain poncho ladies the most important thing i hope that everyone takes away from this most important most important is getting some training and your ccw get, tell them not tell training them. that is not, not training, training at all uh, because that's one of the most dangerous things we we have holstering classes and people come in and you know, especially you can tell people who were self-taught and they're muzzling what their you, own I saw it on the internet. I saw it on the they're internet. They drive me crazy. I'm worried to death about them. They have their hand in their mouth. It's scary. But uh, go to a competent instructor. Get some training. I know we're not trying to sell. No, not You know, what little percent of people are near us who can train with us. It's not to sell you. But go and find someone competent and have them show you how to draw correctly. Yeah, the whole nine yards, not just drawing, but the whole nine yards. If you're going to carry a gun in public, that's because you believe at some point in your life you may need to actually get that gun out and use it to defend your life. That's a whole other ball game, right? That's that's way different than standing on the range and just shooting at a, at a paper target that doesn't move. Uh, now it's uh, very, very fluid, very, very dangerous, uh, and this is something that most of these skills that you're going to need have to become a reaction. So like if I toss the ball at you, you wouldn't have to think about what you're doing. Just like if I had to get my gun right now, that wouldn't even be a thought. It would just be getting the gun out and doing what I need to do with it. And those are the types of things uh, that are critically important. Some other quick tips that might help you guys out when you start carrying is a really easy and cheap thing to buy is on Amazon they have those little uh, steel boxes you can keep for your car. They're like a safe. 
uh, those are great to have because you never know what's going to happen. You know, if you're going to need to lock up your, your gun and... Yeah, Gun Vault, I think is the name of the company. Yeah. I mean, it's lots of them. them at the gun stores too, like $20. Walmart. You can probably buy them at Walmart. Probably at Walmart. And uh, we have a video about locking your gun in your car. And it's just something to have. That way you have peace of mind. If you did need to leave it in your car, it's locked up safe and you have a key for it. And, and there's usually a cable away. that comes with it too. And a cable Use that you... cable. Cable that to the frame of your car. <laughs> I mean, to the, the seat. And then stick that underneath there. And another thing is uh, planning your day. We have a really good uh, video with one of the top defense lawyers. And one thing that he suggests is like planning out your day, thinking about where you're going to go. Can you carry there? Um, it, you know, if there's going to be a metal detector, you're going to, that's when something like that gun safe would come in handy. So knowing what you're going to do and uh, planning your ad. Yeah, absolutely. Not much to say about that. We'll keep, uh, we'll keep adding little sprinkles on CCW videos, but there, we've done so many of them out there. Uh, we're just bringing back some of the old stuff that uh, people continue to ask questions about. So it's it's always going to be a hot topic and a growing one, which we're happy about to help out with. So yeah. Oh, and also CCW insurance. Uh, oh yeah. You, that's something that you might want to look into doing. There's many top companies. Uh, we've done a video on it too. We can post that link. Um, but Here, let's cut to the chase on that one. CCW safe. Yeah, that's, that's the one we use. We use um, and it's a. Does it mean it's the only one? No, there's hundreds. No, and there's plenty of other ones. So check them out and see which one fits you guys best. Um, but it's definitely worth the price. Oh, absolutely. And here's the other thing: people like that one, for example, is around 130 dollars for the year. And you go, well, that's too expensive. Well, then you definitely need it. Because what do you think uh, trying to defend your life in a legal battle is going to cost? We also got some new shirts, and so they're just like before, but they have our slogan on the back. So we'll have those up. Check them out if you're interested. It says, I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by 6. Bam, and we're out. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions or anything that you want to see us extend on, um, you know, let us know. If you haven't already, make sure you follow us here on YouTube. Click the little bell so you know when we put a video out. Follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. And until next time, remember, it's always, always better, better to be judged, judged by 12, 12 than carried by, by 6. six.